Hey everyone, welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. As you can tell, we've been a little inconsistent with our uploads recently. Really sick for about a week and a half. And then sadly now, Carly has caught whatever I had. I don't know what it, what it was specifically. Um, she's been COVID tested. It's not COVID. She's on the men. She's doing a lot better. But that's kind of why we've missed the last couple of weeks of Spirits and Ghost Stories. And we're really sorry. Luckily, she's on the men's, and we're really hoping to start recording this weekend a couple of episodes. Uh, the blessing about this is I've been able to do a little bit of research for the next couple of stories, so we should be more consistent. But anyways, no new episode this week, but I am re-uploading a classic one. It is the Walt Water Kelpie. It's a really good episode, and since she's not feeling really good this week, I thought it'd be awesome to kind of relive one of the best episodes she has ever done. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And Carly Bird. Well, week 27, guys. We made it to week 27. We are uh, approaching the Super Bowl in the gauntlet of February. Spring is thinking about coming eventually. Oh, it's 50 degrees yeah. today outside, and I'm like obsessed with it. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Hence the shorts. I, I know, right? And then my classes <laughs> have started. I'm in my final gauntlet semester for my MBA program. And then by, jo by July, by the end of July, by July 31st, I will have graduated and August will be my first month in a very long time with no school. Yeah. It's scary. I feel like it's like Shawshank Redemption. I don't think you'll of, be able to handle it. It's going to be pretty crazy. You're going to have to go like through a week long cleanse mm -hmm. of of like just doing like nothing. Yes. It's going to it's going to be weird, but I like We'll get more into that as we get closer. We'll have some kind of celebration. I know I'm going to be celebrating. We've got a lot of time. Way. Like, um, but that's me. That and then happens. I'm working still while doing all that. Uh, fishing the DMV is going extremely well, which is my other uh, media project I'm working on. Everything's going. It's just feels good. Yeah. I all have all. a huge uh, test that would hopefully. Oh, yeah. yeah. For my career. Talk, we got some time. Talk to us some, about that. Some, uh, it's a certification test. I took it about a year and a half ago and got a, got a decent score. But if I can get my points up just a little bit higher mm. this time, I can get a nice chunky raise. So that's basically what I'm going for. Um, and that is tomorrow. And that's about a two-hour drive to get to the testing location mm. and then take the test. It's going to be three hours. You asked me before if I can actually, um, what's it called? Like prepare myself like yeah. mentally and like like um just like study and uh no <laughs> there's no studying it's just it's it's a test and i knowing that i take it taken it before i know uh, the format of it mm -hmm. but obviously like i don't know the information that i'm going to have to actually um, answer questions on and like interpret for and things like that so it's, it's a performance test. Mm -hmm. So like they set a camera up in front of you and they have a little screen and you just have to interpret what you see. And right, then right. they send it off to like people that actually like grade you. And then you get your score back in like three to four months. And then a couple months after that, you get your raise if you get a high enough score. I mean, I know it's stressful, but you're going to do a wonderful job. Um, yeah. Just don't be yourself. You know what to do. You got this. Do be myself. Yes. Thank do, you. Do, do be yourself. Do be myself. Do you. Mm -hmm. Smooshy smoosh. Smooshy smoosh. But uh, yeah, and then drinking wise today, guys, you know, it is spirits and ghost stories. Our big hook is is entertaining different beverages, but we also uh, believe drinking responsibly and a healthy lifestyle. And so for the, you know, for the month of February, uh, no alcohol. We're not doing alcohol at all. Um, we're, we're eating healthier. Yeah. Um, again, we're focusing on our fitness. Yes. We've been like, to the gym. Yeah. Three days in a row. That's the reason we look like little gym rats sitting here yeah. in front of you right now. I mean, he looks the same as he always looks because he is a gym rat. But I, um, I, I now fit the, fit the part. And you have done a remarkable job. You're losing weight, looking toned and sexy as ever. Oh, Congratulations. And yeah, so, you know, but don't worry, guys, we'll be getting back to that. But again, drink responsibly, be healthy, balance in life. That's that's what's very important. Right. Stick with the other addiction, which is caffeine. Yes, it is. It is the thing of the gods. So Carly is actually presenting a story this week. Um, Carly, what do you got? 
Okay. First, I'd like to walk you down this little path of investigations that brought me to this story. Um, uh, first, obviously, we did the Sasquatch story mm -hmm. last week. I had a lot of fun gathering up all of that information, the the history behind it, the websites that you can you can see, you know, all of the Sasquatch findings yeah. throughout the world, you know, that kind of deal. So as I did my research on the Sasquatch, it brought me to, um, you know, it was like Sasquatch is like other mythological creatures. Mm -hmm. And it said the, um, the, the, Snallygaster. the, the Snallygaster, right? Like that, like the Loch Ness monster, mm -hmm. um, like the abominable snowman, all of those creatures. And I was like, Oh, what if we just go down this list? The next one will oh, be okay. the Loch Ness monster or the abominable snowman. So I started to do a lot of research on that creature mm -hmm. in the snow that people talk about. And I found a lot of information out, but it just, it felt too similar. Mm -hmm to Bigfoot. Yeah. And I was like, back to back, like maybe we'll get into the abominable snowman later in life, uh, throughout this podcast life. But let's maybe look into something else. So I was like, fine, let's research the Loch Ness Monster. So as I got through the Loch Ness Monster, I realized there that's a Scottish myth hmm. of the, the Loch Ness Monster. And there are other creatures out there Ooh. that are also monsters of the water wow okay so you're definitely okay i like what you're doing okay that's nice a right. curveball it is a curveball okay so what i am presenting for you today is the kelpie the kelpie is a Scottish folklore. They are beautiful creatures that took on forms of both horses and humans. Although they, although they looked beautiful and innocent, they were dangerous creatures that would lure people to their deaths by coming to shore. They would take on the form of a horse with a saddle and a bridle to attract attention. Those who were attracted to the animal's beauty would attempt to sit on its saddle and ride it. However, once they sat on the saddle, they would become fixed there, stuck, hmm. unable to dismount. The Kelpie would then gallop straight into the water, taking their victim to its depths where it would finally devour them. Really? Have you ever heard of the Kelpie before? I have not. I mean, oh, so I know this, we don't want to make this way too long, but like there was a book series you read. A while, so she used to actually work in, what was it high school? Kindergarten? I worked in the school system. Yeah, Let's just put it that way. I'm just trying to do the age group. So the age group at the time I was working in a middle school. Okay, yes. so this so she was reading. She was at middle school, and one of the books uh, through the grapevine, she got this book about this thing called um, Kong Pao Unska. Kong Pao. It was a Kapal. Kapal. Ushka. Kapal Ushka. Yes. Kapal Ushka. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is pronounced in different ways depending on where you're from. Got you. But it was a book series about that. And you want to get into that while I bring up the image of um, Kapal Ushka for so, our audience? So, um, yes. So, those who were attracted to the animal's beauty would attempt to sit on its saddle. We already talked about that. Kelpies would also take on the form of beautiful young women or men. And well, so the women would sit on rocks by the river waiting for young men to come by, much like the sirens of ancient Greece, which is another mythological beast. They would then seduce their unsuspecting victims and drag them into the water to be eaten. The origins of the Kelpie myth is of Celtic and Scottish mythology. The meaning of the word Kelpie remains uncertain, but it is believed that it was derived from the Gaelic word kapal, or pale peach, which means colt or heifer. There are many stories about Kelpies, one of the most common being the tale of the Loch Ness Monster. Mm. However, it's not clear where these stories actually originated. According to the certain sources, to certain sources, the Kelpies may have their roots in ancient Scandinavia, where horse sacrifices were performed. Ew. Did so, yeah. So let's, uh, let, you want know, you want to show the audience this thing? Yeah. So what I have up first for the audience, and we're going to be sharing our screens right now. Um, this right here is actually the Kapal Ushka. This is a hand drawing of one. 
And that thing is gnarly looking. Right. Like, look at that thing. Right. So basically, that story, if anybody gets into mythological stories um, or sci-fi stories, especially about animals and beasts, I highly, highly recommend the story. I started reading it with zero expectations whatsoever and was just completely obsessed with it when I by from from front to cover. Um, it's basically about a mythological creature where um, they're like horses, as you can see in the picture, but they come from the water and then people will catch them, try to tame them enough to ride them and then ride them throughout this race. And whoever wins the race wins a ton of money or like, you know, mm -hmm. is famous or whatnot. And then they never have to like do anything yeah again. they're alive that thing is gnarly so it's basically about this um girl who has nothing their parents died they don't like they're getting their their house is about to be taken away from them she can't find a job it's this tiny little island but the races are coming up so she you know, decides that she's going to ride in the race and throughout the whole thing it's a beautiful story about the relationship between a person and a horse and then a cute little love triangle but um <sighs> something that could viciously eat you completely different than like Remington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why it's so fun. It's that it's like you have to actually tame this animal so that it doesn't take you into the water. But the whole time is like people die during this race constantly because the the Kapal Ushka will take them into the water and then drown them and then like eat them if they're not like ready to be raced or if the person isn't skilled enough to control the beast. That's impressive. That yeah. is gnarly as hell. But yeah. yet women love horses. And then the next <laughs> the next one here that we have on the screen is the Kelpie. Right. Um, and this is just kind of some ancient lore that I found on the old Google about it. And it's just, it's a very interesting, again, I think this goes back to, I, I think you said it's like that Celtic mythology mm -hmm. of the horse and how important that was. Yeah. I think to, to, I heard somewhere that the horse is like one of the most important animals ever created because it gave humans back in the day to, to be mobile, mm -hmm. like unlike um, like cows or sheep or pigs, like the horse really changed not only warfare, but just people's ability to commute like long distances. Right. And, right. and that's crazy. So like, that's almost like a mythical thing, like a horse has. Um, and so I think it's interesting with the Kelpie that they're taking that, that reverence for the horse, but now they're applying that, that twist on it. That's yeah. really interesting. And then again, guys, for all of our like listeners, head over to our YouTube channel and you can actually kind of see what we're what we're showing you right now. But it's 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 interesting. It really is. Yeah, well, it's interesting. And I'm about to explain to you kind of why it was brought on like this twist was brought on to the, the myth itself. Um, the Scandinavians told stories of dangerous water spirits that ate little children. And the purpose of these stories was to scare children into staying away from dangerous waters. Mm. Okay, so much like the boogeyman, the stories of the Kelpies were also told to scare children into good behavior. Also similar to our Christmas cat of what, do you remember? Scandinavian. It? Was it Scandinavian? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, I think so. I think you're that right. Would eat homeless people that didn't look nice. Right, <laughs> right. Nice. <laughs> so they were told that the Kelpies would come after children who behaved badly, especially on Sundays. Kelpies were also blamed for any deaths caused in water. If hmm. someone drowned, people would say that they had been captured and killed by the Kelpies. That is so interesting to me. This Christian spin on things. Mm -hmm. So like, again, I think it's so cool because it all started with the Snallygaster and really like like really digging into that stuff but like yeah. you have this 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 pagan culture of the celts and you have these stories but then because of you know christianity taking over everywhere they have that 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 christian spin on it where it's like yeah on sundays don't because this creature will get you it's like it's just, to right. me it's fascinating the blending of cultures like that right right yeah actually um I might get into this a little bit, but I kind of want to give you this backstory because I know some more other information mm -hmm. that isn't here. Uh, basically, the only way to control the Kelpie is to take its bridle. Okay, so if you take its bridle off, then you can control the Kelpie. Well, when the Kelpie transforms into a man or a woman, that's their bridle turns into a silver chain. And if you take that silver chain, you have control of the beast and they're known to be very strong workers or very hard workers. And um, if you have control of them, then you can get them to build things for you and they have boundless ener energy. However, as Christianity came more a part of the um, Scottish religion, 
that myth changed from taking the necklace away to adding a necklace with a with a cross on it hmm. for Christ, basically. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then That's also cool. it had to it had to be like a special kind of cross that was blessed by you know the the religious yeah um, the priest the, the priest or whatever like yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that was interesting that I also found out. And back to the story. You keep distracting me, like well, no, trying to get through the story. Yeah, here. I know. I know. I want to get to the story, but that that's just fascinating to me because it goes back to some people that we've listened to mm -hmm. that talk about like the truths of old stories. Yeah. And so it's like you don't want your kid to go near the water because they could possibly drown. Well, what do you do? Well, good parenting back then is just scare the living shit out of them, tell them that there's a monster's gonna eat them. Like, hey, guess what? They won't go near the water. Hey, Emotional it works, it works. Done. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> anyway, since the Kelpie was said to have taken on the form of a man traditionally, the story warned young women to be wary of young, attractive strangers. Pause. I'm sorry. That is so, <laughs> that is such a, that's like a, a born again Christian. Like, exactly. Like, oh, girls don't go date that guy because. And he's near the water. Like, what's so, right. listen, right. Sarah, when you see that hot man down the street, when you see that hot swimming naked piece of ass and you see floating those, in the river <laughs> and he dries off and you see him in slow motion in that crisp sunlight, you know, that's wow, the devil. Wow, that's the wow. devil working on it. You see his bulging six pack and okay. baby blue eyes. All right. Slow down. You know what he is? He's a Kelpie. No, no, he's not a person. He's, he's a, a horseman, a... which I think was really bad to say <laughs> that he's a horseman because that's just going to make him even sexier. Let's be honest. With a dark past? Hell yeah. How, what is a horse? You mean like a centaur? A horseman? Well, he he just can, trots out of the water. You he, can see he, his lower he, half. No, he literally <laughs> transforms. They're shapeshifters. So you're saying the perfect man to an equestrian. So for it's all also of our horse. mounted gamers out there, your perfect man is what? One that you like lock in a stall, you come out, he shapes into a horse, you trot him around, then he shapes back in there for dinner. And cleans, then you put him his, back. cleans his own shit out of the stall, and then you, you lock him in there. We are going to revisit this on another episode. <laughs> I got so excited about this. Like in the comments creature. below. If you would like to know. Uh, actually, yeah. All the equines in there. Is that your perfect male? Is someone that can shape into a man and then you can ride him at your competition and put him back in the stall? Like It's like it's multitasking. You just need one. You just, yeah. Yeah. I'm all about that. Just have one. Bye. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> the Kelpie la, 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 ba, ba, is often described as a large, strong, and powerful horse with black hide, although in some stories it's said to be white. To unsuspecting passerby, it looks like a lost pony, but it could be easily identified by its beautiful mane. What was special about the Kelpie's mane is that it always dripped water. Even whenever it transformed into a man or woman, the hair was always damp. Hmm. According to some sources, the Kelpie was entirely green with a flowing black mane and tail that curled over its back like a magnificent wheel. That was like the picture we just saw. Yes. Of them. Yeah. It's said that even when it took on human form, its hairy hair always continued to drip water, which is what I just said. The Kelpie has been depicted in many works of art throughout history in its various forms. Some artists sketched the creature as a young maiden sitting on a rock, whereas others depict it as a horse or a handsome young man. In Falkirk, Scotland, Andy Scott sculpted two large steel horse heads about 30 meters high, which became known as the Kelpies. It was built hmm. to bring people together, not only from Scotland, but the rest of Europe, but from all corners of the world. Oh, so question is, what do Kelpies symbolize? I think we kind of answered that question, but there's a little bit more depth into yeah. it. The origin of the Kelpies is probably related to the foaming white waters of fast rivers that can also be dangerous to those who try to swim in them. Mm -hmm. They represent the dangers of the deep and the unknown. Kelpies also symbolize the repercussions of temptation. Hmm. Those who are attracted to these creatures pay for this temptation with their lives. It's a reminder to stay on track without veering off into the unknown. Mm -hmm. For women and children, Kelpies represent the need for good behavior and the importance of following norms. Hmm. Oh. That's interesting. Yes. Okay. Wow. All right. So I couldn't decide on which story I wanted to go with this um, specific creature. So I, I have three. 
I have three short stories, which might turn into two short stories, depending on how long they take to get through. But um, they're not very detailed and you can find them in a lot longer form, but some of them are kind of slow to get started. So I decided to stick with the short and sweet. So the first story I have about the Kelpie or um, let's see. The, the water horse, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's it's more than a story. It's um, It's like a wise tale. Oh, okay. okay. So it's called The Ten Children and the Kelpie. There are numerous stories about the Kelpie, which vary depending on region. One of the most common and well-known stories about these mythological creatures is the Scottish tale of the ten children who one day came across a beautiful horse by the river. The children were fa fascinated by the beauty of the creature and wanted to ride it. However, nine of them climbed onto the horse's back while the tenth kept a distance. As soon as the nine children were on the Kelpie's back, they got stuck to it and couldn't get off. The Kelpie chased the tenth child, trying its hardest to eat him, but the child was quick and escaped. In an alternate version of the story, the tenth child stroked the creature's nose with his fingers, which got stuck to it. Realizing the danger he was in, the child cut off his own fingers and cauterized it with a piece of burning wood from a fire he found burning nearby. In a more gruesome version of the tale, like I'm telling you, there's a lot. The child's entire hand was stuck to the Kelpie, so he took his pocket knife out and cut it off at the wrist. By doing this, he managed to save himself, but his nine friends were dragged underwater by the Kelpie never to be seen again. That's three different, ex wow. One is one is light and fluffy. How the, the hell second is like more, uh, and then the third is just like, You find a pony whoa. in the middle of the woods, and all of your friends just hop on it one after another after another. <laughs> the in the different story, times, different times, in different versions of the story, which I did read, the children were very young. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. They were all kind of just running around in the woods together. Their parents were nearby. Um, the next story I have for you is called The Kelpie and the Laird of Morphe. Huh. So FYI, I don't know if you know what Laird means, nope. but it is a generic name for the owner of a large, long established Scottish estate. Hmm. In the traditional Scottish order of precedence, a Laird ranked below a baron and above a gentleman. I originally thought that a Laird was basically a synonym of uh, like a Lord or Lady, yeah. and it's not. Oh. I did research on that. So it has been said that this evil spirit can be caught if you get its bridle off its head. Mm -hmm. It will do anything to get its bridle back. And so the story goes that a Scottish laird wished to build for himself a great castle on top of a hill. He was too mean to pay for la laborers to carry the stones. He did not like to part with his money. And so he looked around for ways to get his castle built for nothing. It was one evening when dining with his wife, he struck on an idea. He would catch her, capture a water kelpie and use the horse to carry all of his stones up the hill. His wife shook her shook shook in her shoes at the very thought of it. I was going to say that's a fun dinner conversation. Yeah. I'm going to capture a water horse. Hey, hon, you know how I'm really cheap? You know that bloodthirsty creature? What if, hear me out, hear me out, we caught him or her and we used that? Right. And risk our own lives. Yeah. Instead of just, you know, investing into this property. <laughs> um, listen, listen, we need to keep our costs down this, this castle. It's going to be a money maker. This is how we're going to do it. His wife shook in her shoes at the very thought of it. She <laughs> begged him not to tempt such a terrible spirit out of the lock. She said that ill would be born on all of them if such a thing were to be done. The Kelpie will cast a spell on us, she howled. But the mean old laird was having none of it. He got a hazel frond and fashioned it, fashioned a cross that he nailed to the front door. Then he battened up all the windows, leaving one at the rear of the house open enough for him to climb through. His wife ran up to her room and hid under the bed in terror. Off the laird went into, into the woods with a large knife in his belt. He got to the edge of the lock and there he sat and waited until dusk. Suddenly he saw a ripple reach the shoreline. The water parted and through the descending mist out of the lock rose a splendid chestnut horse, gleaming copper and gold with a handsome bridle of silver and a saddle encrusted with jewels. 
the laird whistled under his breath, for this was a truly magnificent creature. Tall and strong, handsome and elegant, anyone would desire to ride this, this creature. He waited for the horse, and the horse sniffed the air and began to walk gracefully toward some luscious grass. As the horse put its head down to crop the verdant turf, the laird leaped forward from behind a great rock and cut the bridle off the horse's head. It fell to the ground, and deftly the laird picked it up and ran home. The horse neighed and pawed with its foot. Without its bridle, it could not return to the lock, so it followed the laird. The chase was on, and the laird knew that he had to get back to the house, climb in the back window, and run upstairs. The water kelpie rushed to the front door and screamed to see the hazel cross and the door bared. The laird just made it through the window before the horse lashed at him with its teeth in fury. The laird shuddered the window and ran upstairs. The beautiful chestnut horse ran around and around the house, calling for its bridle to be returned. I will give you back your bridle if you carry all of my stones up the hill on your back. The water kelpie had no choice but to do what he said. He became the slave of the laird. Over the months it took to carry all the stones up the hill, the horse grew thin and weak. Its coat dull, its eyes lost their gleam. The once proud horse was skin and bones. It tottered with the last of the stones up the hill for the last time. The laird, satisfied that his castle would be the finest of the kingdom, took the silver bridle and gave it back to the water kelpie. He placed it on the kelpie's head and kicked the chestnut horse and told it to go back to its watery home. With all the strength the water kelpie could muster, it laid a curse on the laird, screaming out across the land for all to hear. He cursed, and he cursed the laird and his family forever. Then the water kelpie turned, and with its last strength, it reached the edge of the lock and plunged back into the black depths. And you know the curse held true. The laird grew old and senile, but his son died in a terrible accident. His wife died not long after the castle was finished, and his daughter gave birth to deformed children, one after another. Soon the line of the laird died out, but the story didn't. If you want to live and thrive, let the Kelpies stay alive. Wow. That was one of my favorites. The picture I have, that's a great story. It's just when I do something stupid and you tell me not to, and I go do it. But the fact that he's hauling, he's wind sprinting back to the house and dives in the door and all hell's breaking <laughs> loose. And just the conversation between him and his wife. She's like, don't do it. So I got it. I got it. And she's outside. I was going crazy. It's just like you punch a bear and you run back to the house. Yeah. Listen, listen, mistakes were made here. Um, <laughs> Yep. Now, how the heck do you like? I okay, fine. I've dealt with one or two horses before. I'm not saying I'm the best equine. I definitely am not. But the idea that you're going to stand behind something and then jump out and surprise the horse and then whoosh, cut something off of it, yeah, you have to have some damn good aim or that thing just does not give a damn. The fact that it, it could literally bite him and just eat him <clears> in one piece too. Yeah, yeah, like that's and all uh, he has is like a little pocket knife. Yeah, and then he could grab it and then haul ass without this thing catching him. Yeah, but. That's really cool. Now, um, one more little thing I forgot to mention about the Kelpie, which I think is important. Um, it could, it's it's a lot like um, the Supernatural, which is why I found it funny. You know, the, the TV show Supernatural mm -hmm. where they have um, bullets that are made out of silver. Mm -hmm. That's what can kill a Kelpie is if you have like a knife made out of silver or a bullet or something. So it's like a That's werewolf supposedly, right, yeah. exactly, exactly. Very similar to a werewolf. Now, can they come out in the daytime too? I'm assuming yes. So they carried the stones. Yeah, stuff. I okay. don't think that a time of day mattered for the kelpie. Okay, it's cool. just they live in the water. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. So I didn't know like with all the mythology there. That's a really good story. Yeah. That's a really good story. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean that's wow. Yeah, I mean the kelpie. So we have been on an absolute tear with cryptids and stuff lately, haven't we? But, I'm like, obsessed with it now. Like I can't stop. <laughs> like, and I, I love, I love the backstory about that thing. That is so interesting. How you're taking a horse. Um, I don't know, like the whole, the legacy of the horse and human culture, but then you're putting this spin on it about making it like maybe not a hundred percent like a servant of man or a servant of, of human beings, so mm -hmm. to speak. That's really neat. And the fact is like back then that was your car. That's like if a random Ferrari showed up and you touch it and you get stuck to it and it like drags you to death. That would literally be, I think like the way you could associate it now. 
Um, and something else I think is interesting. I wonder if it picks like we used to do something called um, the Wendigo, where it could always cry out in a voice that would make you want to come. Does it change its color and appearance based on who it's trying to attract? I thought that was interesting. Like just for that individual, right? It had to look luxurious with the diamond side things versus maybe one with the kids. Maybe it's like a cute little Sebastian, right? Type of, like a, a cute pony. little pony. Yeah, right. right. I don't think that that's an ad. Well, it layer. is a shape shifter. Yes. It's either a man or a woman or a horse or a pony. Yeah, that's, I think that it can. Yeah, that, that's really cool. Um, everyone down. Hey, everyone listening to this podcast, if you could please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, it really helps us out with the algorithm. Also, please leave us a review on Spotify on Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen, any kind of any kind of comment, whether you love us or hate us, really helps us with the algorithm so we can continue to grow this and be able to do more research right now. Yeah. Let us know if you yeah. are liking the the Celtic mythological creatures and then the other creatures that we are doing research yeah. on. We were we are blessed right now to be able to do a bunch of research, but depending on how our schedules will change in the future, it would be nice to Might eventually get some people's help yeah. to help study for these to help study and research these things. So mm -hmm. if you guys are interested in helping out, please send us an email, reach out to us at spirits and ghost stories at gmail.com. Um, besides that, yeah, Carly, that was amazing. That was a fantastic story. Yeah. Really Yay for week twenty seven. Yep. Week twenty seven, guys. Woo! It's pretty awesome. All right. So until next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And I'm Carly Bird. Bye. And don't ride a Kelty. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>